My name is Leia Zhu and I'm 13 years old. I am a violinist, also known as the Violin Girl. I feel incredibly lucky to have a decade of experience of music making on stage, as well as the privilege of travelling around the world to over 16 countries, returning to some of them many times. Mendelssohn Violin Concerto in E minor. It's the fourth time I've performed this concerto since the age of eight. Every time I perform the same work, I try to play it differently and experiment with the piece, exploring the possibilities of different interpretations. To see Hans von Bülow, one of Mendelssohn's students pupils, and he's going to tell us how Mendelssohn wants us to play his music. Whoever wants to play Mendelssohn the correct way must forget all sentimentally, blah blah blah, despite the temptation derived from certain passages. One must try to play such passages simply in time, with a beautiful even touch of course, and will no doubt notice that they sound much nobler and more graceful this way than when played with a particularly passionately excited rubato. The master insisted above all on strict observance of the rhythm. He prohibited categorically any ritornado not marked in a score and wanted those that were marked to be limited to a minimum. So that tells us that Mendelssohn wants us not to play any rubato, but to play in tempo. I have transported myself and you to this part of the room because I'm going to show you now how Mendelssohn wanted us to play his cadenza more detailed. So along with my violin. You see, if I hadn't known about these letters between Mendelssohn and Ferdinand David, well, I only just knew recently, very recently. Um, I would have played the cadenza a bit like this.
Speaking of Mendelssohn, I have also performed his first violin concerto in D minor, composed when he was only 13. This work was only discovered in the 20th century by Lord Yehudi Menuhin, and isn't as popular or well known as his concerto in E. However, it shows such a joyful and lightness to it that will make anyone fall in love with it. Russia has always been a very special place for me. I have many fond memories of this beautiful country. I've been there at least a dozen times, each time with a new adventure to look forward to. A particular highlight was certainly travelling to one of the most remote areas, Novosibirsk, performing in the Trans-Siberian Arts Festival. Moscow twice before I was invited to play in a very exotic place in Russia at the age of nine. It's called Shugut. Even many of my Russian friends have never heard of it before. The works I performed were the Bizzini Dance of the Goblins and the Tchaikovsky Ballon Concerto.
also had this amazing opportunity to perform this entire concerto again in London two years later. Tchaikovsky composed his violin concerto during a very turbulent period of his life. Although he was secretly homosexual, he had agreed to marry one of his students who allegedly proclaimed that she would commit suicide if he didn't. Unsurprisingly, the marriage was a complete disaster and within a few months he had fled to Lake Geneva in Switzerland probably to escape her, and that was where he composed a few compositions, including his violin concerto. Another special Russian city is St. Petersburg. Last year, I performed the Vinyovsky Concerto No. 1 in the White Knights Festival in Marinsky Theatre. Mm -hmm. My favourite memory was eating edible gold decorated on top of a Napoleon cake after the concert. And this is the dessert. Napoleon cake. The gold on the raspberry. The gold. The gold. Nice, I'm gonna tuck it out. Also in St. Petersburg, I was invited to perform in the musical Olympus Festival, where I played the Paganini Concerto No. 1.
my first Paganini Caprice when I was seven. Paganini La Campanella is also a great showpiece. The first time I performed it was in beautiful Miami, where I remember setting off from home at 6 degrees Celsius wearing winter jackets and arriving at Miami at 26 degrees. <laughs> Paganini La Campanella became a piece which the audience or organiser requested to hear on many occasions. Later on that year, I performed it in KKL in the Luzerne Festival. Then, one year later, I also toured this piece in Switzerland and Germany with the Luzerne Festival strings in festivals including the Rheingau Music Festival and European Week Passau. I also played this piece in the Alton Music Festival and in Windsor Castle. For me, Switzerland is a country that's very close to my heart. The first time I went there I was six years old and since then I've been back multiple times every year. It's like a second home. The first time I performed in a castle was also in Switzerland. 
I played the Haydn Concerto in C major and the Bach Concerto in E major with the Zurich Chamber Orchestra. <laughs> I enjoyed performing at the Northeast last night of the proms, a solo unaccompanied piece. And one month later, I had the pleasure collaborating the Chadders together with Roby Lakatosh.
have been several occasions when things didn't go according to plan, but all of them still turned out well in the end. A few years back, I was so excited to be able to attend the masterclass of the violinist Leonidas Kavakos. One month before the masterclass, I sustained an arm injury during a dance routine at school. This left me unable to play the violin for the whole month, and I was only able to practice meekly for a few days before I was to fly abroad. Nevertheless, I participated in the masterclass, and although I didn't play as well as I had hoped, I was just really happy that I made it to Greece at all. Another memorable occasion occurred just a few months later in Israel. I overstretched my muscles whilst playing badminton without having warmed up. And this was one day before a concert I was due to give. In view of the injury, I even had to cancel the performance, despite being hugely disappointed. I, I really wanted to be on the stage, performing and sharing my music, and I was determined not to let my audience down due to my rash actions. Therefore, just half an hour before it was my turn on the stage, I decided I would play. I was supposed to play the Paganini Concerto No. 1 first movement, but my arm was still very painful, so I changed the program to the Souvenir de Moscow by Vinyovsky, even though I hadn't played that piece in over a week. I couldn't even run through the full piece backstage before I had to perform it, and to be honest, this was one of the most frantic moments I have ever experienced. Once again, it was such a rewarding experience being on the stage, and not only did I receive great enthusiasm and appreciation from the audience, it also led to an invitation for a six city tour in Israel one and a half years later. There was another occasion which I remember vividly. I was scheduled to play a concert with an orchestra and 24 hours before the concert, I got word that due to some unforeseen circumstances, one of the main scheduled pieces had to be changed. And that gave me very little time to prepare a replacement piece 
and I had maximum less than two hours of rehearsal time available with the orchestra before the concert. Although I did have the option to just miss out the piece entirely, I went for a piece that I last performed six months prior, as I still remembered it well. These hairy moments have taught me not to despair or overreact when things do not go according to plan. With determination, optimism and confidence, it is amazing what can be achieved. Another super virtuosic piece I enjoyed learning and performing was the Variations on the Last Rose of Summer by Ernst. Known as one of the most challenging pieces for violin, it includes many arpeggios, chords and double stops, as well as featuring many polyphonic features, such as double harmonics and left hand pizzicato whilst playing on the bow at the same time which could be a devilish nightmare for violinists. It not only gave me tremendous pleasure to learn this piece, but also to research the background of it, where I discovered that Ernst had based it upon a poem written by Thomas Moore in 1805. <laughs> Before I went to Israel for the first time when I was 10, I knew almost nothing about the country except that it's the holy land and the birthplace of many religions. I never even heard of the term kibbutz, yet I found myself staying in one for a while. I had the great privilege of staying with the locos and enjoying the life and having a great insight inside the kibbutz and had a fantastic time um, dancing and having fun making music around. <laughs> Thank you.
had a two week 60 tour in Israel where I played the Mozart Concerto No. 5, the Tchaikovsky Serenade Melancholique, the Waxman Common Fantasy, Saint Saens Introduction and Rondo Capriccioso, and Williams Schindler's List. <laughs> the privilege of meeting some of the great violinists of our time and one really memorable moment was meeting Ida Hendo in Miami and she kept asking me um, if I had learned the Sansan's Violin Concerto number no. 3. I was learning it at the time but I never got to perform it until last year in Odessa, Ukraine at the Opera House. point of view, the Lord was watching over you. I would have liked to hear the recent songs, concerto. I love the concerto, don't you? You have to hit the note, the top note.
Whilst Sun Sans reminds me of fire, Sibelius reminds me of water. Within a couple of weeks, I had the chance to perform the Sibelius Violin Concerto in Portugal. Mozart is such a charming composer and all the pieces that he wrote have such a lightness and joyfulness to them that makes you forget about the troubles in real life.
as his music is so pure and heavenly and it just brings you to a whole different dimension. absolutely enjoy emotionally deep pieces. They allow me to explore the feelings and sensitivity within the music. For me, the Dvorak Romance is a, it's a highly underrated piece of music. When I play it, I feel such a sense of elation and such a happiness and it's just such a beautiful piece of music. I'm quite disappointed that it isn't as popular or has the amount of recognition that it deserves. melody is based on the myth, the Greek myth, Orpheus and Eurydice. It's, it's got a really ultimately tragic ending and you can hear throughout the piece the pain and the sorrow that Orpheus feels when he's playing on his magic flute. memories of my musical journey so far include me playing the Lalo Symphony Espanol in Belgium when I was nine. I played it with the National Orchestra of Belgium and was conducted by none other than Maxim Vengerov in Beaux-Arts. Violin Concerto I learned was the Bruch Violin Concerto in G minor. I was seven at the time and I remember feeling so happy that I had conquered such a complicated concerto.
I went abroad was actually for my first international tour in Spain. I played in nine cities and I just turned six at the time. And this really made a huge impact on my life and really motivated and inspired me. My family and I went sightseeing around the cities I was performing in. And I remember seeing a poster advertising for the, the concerts with my face on it and the sense of proudness and euphoria I had at the moment, it was, I simply can't describe it. My first domestic tour in the northeast of England took place when I was five years old. Also when I was five, my first recital took place, which was 45 minutes long and which I'm still proud of today. The northeast last night of the proms was my first big performance. It was quite nerve-wracking, but at the end everyone was cheering and clapping, and that made me really happy. I remember telling my parents afterwards that I wanted to do it again the next weekend. <laughs> 2020 is a year that has and will affect many. We're all caught up in the coronavirus pandemic. I know that no matter what will happen, music will carry on. <laughs>